Sunday morning. Uh, in our announcements, of course, Chair Aerobics continues Monday, Wednesday, Friday here in the Fellowship Hall. Tuesdays at uh, 10 o'clock, we will be concluding the study of John this, this Tuesday, and then we will have a week off, and then um, on the 23rd, I believe, we will resume and we will begin studying Daniel. That's 10 a.m. here at Bethany and 7 p.m. at Oakland. I believe it's that time again, isn't yes. it? Yes. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, Missions and More will meet before the eclipse. We will be meeting at 10 o'clock, and Body Miles will be a speaker. She went on a mission trip to Africa last summer, and it was a life-changing experience for her. So I hope you can be here tomorrow at 10 o'clock to learn more about this mission trip. Thank you. Also, got, just got an announcement this morning. On uh, May the 11th, Oakland will be hosting the Mother's Day tea. That will be at 12 noon. We have some information out on the table there. It's a formal invitation. And also, if you cannot make it, you can uh, have some forms out there for that. Mary Catherine is here, and she will. Uh, she's the one handling that, so all the information is out on the table there, if you, when you leave, you glance at that and get your information. And don't forget, the back of your bulletin there, coming up on uh, June the 10th, which is going to be here before we know it, we have the trip to Lancaster once again, and this time they will be, uh, the play will be on Daniel, and also visiting the Bible Museum and the beautiful country up there and all. So if you want to make a reservation, let Phil or Leanne know so we can get that in and uh, get you down for it. Are there any other announcements this morning? I'm sure you said council meeting. Sometimes I'm in and sometimes I'm not. Are we have a council meeting today? That will be next Sunday. I guess that's regular time. Second Sunday. Second Sunday. It's the second Sunday of Easter, oh. but the first you're, you're getting ahead of us now. Come on, don't, don't, oh, okay. don't. Don't confuse me anymore, please. All right. Well, if not, let's stand then. Our invocation is found there on the screen and also in the bulletin. So let's join together in that then, please. Let's pray together. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened to us the gate to everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection may by the renewing of your spirit arise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now if you will please let's turn to page 420 in the hymnal and join together in Breathe on Me Breath of God.
Thank you and be seated. Well, good morning. Good morning. It's a delight to see you all here this morning. And I'm mighty glad that Easter was last Sunday, not today, because it was cold enough last Sunday, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but it's warming up out there, so it's going to be a nice day. Um, I want to invite all of you to come and join us Tuesday for Bible study, whether you've been there or not. Because I've been preaching on the Gospel of John, well, for the whole quarter of the year. And it got one more Sunday to go. And we're going to wrap things up uh, this Tuesday. And so I really encourage, even if you hadn't been to class, come on and join us either in the morning or afternoon so that you'll learn a lot more than what I've been able to share during the sermons. And also I'll have the books on Daniel to hand out. So if y'all would like to take this study on Daniel, you can get your book and uh, maybe even want to join us on our field trip. Y'all remember when you were in school and you would have field trips? Well, that's the way we do it. We've got the Bible study on Daniel, then we take the field trip up to see the play, and it'll be a lot of fun. So uh, what joys and what concerns do you all have? Then I'll share what's on my plate. It was an act of love. They, they need all of our prayers as they seek closure and grief. And um, our brother Larry Reynolds needs your prayer and Barb and all the family. Uh, Larry's now in palliative care, and so his time is getting close. The family's been gathering by the bedside. Um, and he's still conscious, and he can't talk much, but he can hear. So, I mean, they're having some quality time during this sacred time, but, but keep them in your prayers. And I'd appreciate some prayers um, in, in our family. I've been doctoring Nanny and Leanne this week. Leanne learned a valuable lesson. On Easter Sunday, she'll sit in the back with the rest of you good Methodists back there and not up close to where she will be too close to the Easter lilies. Cause set off, relax there. And I'm not sure what set Nanny off, but... Uh, uh, they've both been down with them. And fortunately, Leanne was a little better uh, this morning. And Leanne's mother uh, has a ray of hope. She went up to UVA Friday, and she has to go back Thursday. They're going to try a procedure that may relieve some pain. And so we're praying that she'll get some relief on that. And, uh, it, yeah. Um, Levi, right. We'll keep Levi in our prayers. Bo? I'll give you an update on my family members. Yeah. She's in state college. Uh, she's a little bit uh, perturbed with uh, her no soft diet. Ooh. Uh, her sodium, <laughs> uh, really bad. Uh, cut her a lot of the foods that she loves. And they put her on uh, a Lasix medication, which keeps her hopping up and down. Yeah. Mm. She's a good speaker. Uh, lives in Cedar Rapids. 
Good. It is. And we'll keep you in our prayers too. All righty. Any others? Yeah. And for the ladies and the men, it was a good run for both of them. It, it, it truly was. So, and. Um, They'll repeat 83 one of these years. Definitely, definitely. Are there any other joys or concerns? Then let's bow our heads and lift up our hearts as we go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's always a joy to gather with our brothers and sisters in Christ to worship you, to praise your holy name, to hear your Holy Word proclaimed to us to, to learn how we can live according to your will, not according to ours. And Father, as we've been going deeper into the Gospel of John, we are amazed at the amazing things that Christ did to prove to the world that he truly was your son, your messenger, your your anointed one to do for us what we could not do for ourselves father give us the the eyes of faith that we can see where there is no two different christ the historic christ and the one in the bible but they're the one and the same then also give us then father the voice to speak the word that you give to us the word that speaks the truth, that you loved us so much that you became one of us to die a horrible death so that we don't have to be dead forever. That indeed when we do lose our mortal life, we know there's more. That the promise of the resurrection is real. And Father then, because of this, Help us to live our lives accordingly. Help us, Father, to not just pray prayers or recite creeds from memory, but let us do it from the heart. Let our words be sincere when we pray the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
come on down. Well, good morning. I hope y'all had a happy Easter and good week off from school, was it? Okay. Well, I've got a question to see if what they're teaching in school is um, kind of what we remember. I think it was um, 56 years ago this past week that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. Do y'all know who he was? Who was Dr. King? He was a civil rights activist. Civil rights activist and leader. Exactly right. Um, this summer, on about July the 20th, I think, in 69, was when the first American landed on the moon. Do y'all know who that was? Neil Armstrong. Very, very good. You guys are doing good. Guys. Now, the uh, date, September 11th, 2001, is a day that's important to a lot of people. Do y'all know the significance of that date? Yes. And what happened on 9-11? The Twin Towers collapsed. And why did they collapse? Terrorists flew planes into them. Now, y'all have no doubt about any of these things that happened before you were born, do you? And why don't you have any doubt about it? Say, say a little bit louder so the folks in the back can hear. News about it. Yeah. And you were taught that in your history classes, right? So, even though it was a whole lot longer, Jesus Christ was a real person. He was just as historical a person as Dr. King and Neil Armstrong, George Washington. So why do you suppose people doubt about Jesus Christ? Well, actually, there was news about Jesus. Not just what was in the Bible, but there was a historian named Flavius Josephus. Flavius lets us know he was Roman. Josephus tells us he was Jewish. And about the time that John was writing his gospel, Josephus was writing a history of the Jews. It was called Antiquities. And in his history, he mentions Jesus, John the Baptist, and James, the brother of Jesus. So there was historical accounts written. There was plenty of news at the time of what Jesus did, which was why when Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, we celebrated Palm Sunday. People heard about Jesus. But today, people are uncertain about Jesus, not because they don't believe he was a historic figure, but they have a hard time believing he was who he claimed to be, the Messiah, the Son of God. And that's why it's up to us today who believe to share the good news so that the world won't just know about Jesus, but they can come to know who Jesus truly was. And indeed, the reason John's gospel was written was so that by believing in Jesus, people may have everlasting life through his name. That's the responsibility of Christian of all ages and that falls upon you all as well as upon us to share that good news. That's why we study the Bible, so that we can share it with others. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for giving us the Bible to tell us about Jesus. But more important than the Bible is Jesus himself. Help me to get to know Jesus better. And help me commit my life to him because he committed his life for me. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Y'all doing good. Doing good. It's good having you here today. Hello. Hello there. How you doing? We were blessed, aren't we? Good morning. Our epistle reading today comes from the book of 1 John, 
1 John chapter 1 and then verses 1 and 2 in chapter 2. Christ was alive when the world began, yet I myself have seen him with my own eyes and listened to him speak. I have touched him with my own hands. He is God's message of life. This one who is life from God has been shown to us and we guarantee you that we have seen him. I am speaking of Christ who is eternal life. He was with the Father and then he was shown to us. Again, I say that I am telling you about what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may share the fellowship and the joy we have with the Father and with Jesus Christ the Son. And if you do, as I say in this letter, then you too will be full of joy and so will we. This is the message God has given us to pass on to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So if we say we are his friends, but go on living in spiritual darkness and sin, we are lying. But if we are living in the light of the presence of God, just as Christ does, then we will have wonderful fellowship and joy with each other and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from every sin. If we say we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and refusing to accept the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he can be depended on to forgive us and to cleanse us from every wrong. And it is perfectly proper for God to do this for us because Christ died to wash away our sins. If we claim we have not sinned, we are lying and calling God a liar. For he says we have sinned. My little children, I am telling you this so you will stay away from sin. But if you sin, there is someone to plead for you before the Father. His name is Jesus Christ, the one who is all that is good and who pleases God perfectly. He is the one who takes God's wrath against our sins upon himself and brought us into fellowship with God. And he is the forgiveness for our sins, and not only our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. Our gospel text this morning comes from the gospel of John. It picks up where we left off last Sunday. In chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. And I would invite you to stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. And as the old preacher on the radio used to say, listen carefully and listen closely. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, 
was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. You may be seated. Jesus said, do not doubt, but believe. Well, it's much easier for us to believe if we know exactly what is going on and what is not going on. And this passage of John that I just read is one of the most confusing uh, of many chapters in the gospel that are confusing. Many scholars, people with PhDs, I mean, they know a whole lot more than, than you and I, are confused about just what happened on the night of that first Easter. Last Sunday, we looked at what happened during the morning of that first Easter. The first day of the week, John says. And today we're looking at what happened that night. Again, John emphasizes the first day of the week. That's important because as we mentioned last week, on the first day, creation happened. And that's the real thing that is happening in here is the new creation. A lot of people think that when Jesus showed up to the disciples and he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, that this was John's version of Pentecost. It was not. John was present at Pentecost. And he knows fully well, or he knew fully well, that it wasn't just the disciples who received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, but 150 people received the power of the Holy Spirit. And indeed, in Acts, we see the difference it made in receiving the Holy Spirit. We'll see next week when we conclude our series on John how it didn't seem to make much difference that night because shortly after they received the Spirit, they returned to their default setting. Peter said, I'm going fishing. (laughs) But that same Peter, after Pentecost, proclaimed the gospel with a boldness that he did not have before he received the Holy Spirit. So, here's what happened on the evening of that first day of the new creation. Jesus shows up to where his disciples were gathered and he's, it's his resurrected body. It was not a spirit body even though he walks through locked doors because he shows them a physical body still bearing the wounds from his crucifixion. His first words to them are peace. If you'll recall, among his last words 
to his disciples was, My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, giveth I. He was giving peace before his crucifixion because his disciples were troubled that he was talking about leaving. And they truly didn't understand what he was talking about. And so when he meets up with them again, they're still troubled because they're afraid the Jews are going to come around and round them up. And not just the Jewish people, mind you, but it was the Jewish leaders, the ones who had Jesus executed. So they're huddled together in fear for their lives. So when Jesus shows up, the first thing he wants to do is to give them the peace that only he can give. And then we got to keep in mind that the Gospels were written in Greek and translated into Latin and then into English. And it sometimes loses something in the translation. In the original Greek, it read, Jesus told them to receive a Holy Spirit, not the Holy Spirit. In Greek and also in Hebrew, the word for spirit is the same word for breath and wind. So that in the beginning, when God first made mankind, y'all know the story how he formed him from the dust of the earth. And then what did he do? He breathed his holy breath into the first human, and that human became a living being. And after God had made the first humans, God commissioned them to be his agents in the world. He gave them dominion over creation. Y'all familiar with that story from Genesis? And so on this evening of the first day of the new creation, Jesus is reenacting with his disciples what his father had done in the first creation. Jesus breathes his holy breath into the disciples and actually said, receive a holy breath, not the Holy Spirit. And then he commissions them to be God's agents. He says, as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. He says, if you forgive sins, they're forgiven. If you retain sins, they are retained. Do you see how this is a way of Jesus giving the disciples dominion over the world? Now, the disciples didn't really forgive the sins or retain them. Who does that? God. But the disciples were becoming God's agents just as Jesus had been God's agent. Indeed, a whole lot of the Gospel of John details how Jesus was God's agent here on earth. And so now that Jesus was going to be ascending back to the Father, he is now commissioning his disciples to be God's agents on earth. This isn't John's version of the Pentecost. It's John's version of the Great Commission that we have at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. And indeed, it was on this occasion that the disciples, as Ben Witherington calls them, became the apostles. Because the Greek word for apostles comes from the Greek word post, which means sent. If you're not like Sam and like to send cards or letters to folks, you're going to take them to where? The post office. That's when the disciples who are the students become the apostles, the ones who are sent to be God's agent. And indeed, the whole discipleship method is to take someone in as Jesus did, teach them to be a disciple, equip them 
with all they need to be sent out and become an apostle themselves. That's what we need to do today. And that's what this story is telling us. And that even one who wasn't present when the rest of them were commissioned was still important. Jesus came back a week later for Thomas. And Thomas is given the incorrect title, Doubting Thomas. He didn't doubt any more than the rest of them. He just wasn't there when Jesus was demonstrating the first time. But like a good teacher, Jesus came back to offer class one more time for the student who was absent. That shows how much he cares that he came back for Thomas and said to him, come see for yourself. You're from Missouri? Okay. See and believe. Do not doubt but believe. And then... Thomas makes the profound profession of faith that concludes what John began with his gospel when he says, my Lord and my God. None of the other disciples had said that when Jesus was there the week before. Oh, they rejoice to see the Lord, but none of them professed him as their God. When John began his gospel, you all know the preamble, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and what else? The Word was God. That's how John began this gospel. And he concludes it then with the doubting disciple making the profession of faith, my Lord and my God. John says, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples. I didn't have room to put them all in this book. But this book was written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in him, you may have everlasting life in his name. Do not doubt, but believe. There are no two different Jesuses, a historic Jesus and a biblical Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible is the Jesus of history. They are one and the same. And this Jesus is the Son of God. He is, in fact, God in the flesh. Do not doubt, but believe. Because it is in believing in Christ that we have everlasting life. To the glory of God and our neighbor's good. Amen. Will you please stand and we will... Affirm our faith with these passages from 1 Corinthians and Colossians. It's number 888 in the back of your hymnal. When you get there, say amen. Amen. And as soon as I put my other set of eyes on, I'll be ready. I started, but you all get to finish it. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God. Firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen.
Now let us sing the Gloria Patri as the offerings is brought forward. Let us pray our prayer of thanksgiving together. Generous God, as we gather to offer our tithes and offerings, we are reminded of the words of the Apostle John about the word of life. Just as your word brings light into our lives, may our giving be an act of generosity, a reflection of the abundance of your grace and love. We thank you for the forgiveness and grace offered through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 368. And as we sing this song of victory, let's sing it joyfully and robustly. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. <laughs>
It's interesting, brothers and sisters, that the same person wrote the epistles of John and the gospel of John. They had the same author, but it was two different audiences to whom he was writing. The gospel of John was written to Jews and Gentiles who maybe had heard a little bit about Jesus, but who really didn't know Jesus. It was meant to be a tool of evangelism to help win more new souls to Christ. Whereas his letters were written to the church, just as Paul wrote his letters to the churches, people who had already come to faith in Christ, to help keep them from falling under the spell of heretics and others who would lead them astray. Both the gospel and the letters began with creation in the beginning and showed God's mighty acts of love and grace through Jesus Christ. And we who have come to faith ourselves go out into a hostile world, a world that we need to encounter in order to win souls to Christ today. But don't worry about the world. Because in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I have conquered the world. So go boldly into the world, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, of all that he did for us because of God's great love for us. You are the apostles today, God's agents in our world today. So go with God's love. His peace, his joy, his message, and also his blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.